Hey guys, just a uh, quick sort of service update that I'm going to do today that I thought I'd capture on video. So what we're looking at here is the Orion BMS system for my large battery bank. If you haven't been uh, watching the uh, the channel, then you might want to go look at some of those episodes to, to see what I've been doing. But I've got this large battery bank powering my RV. And what you're looking at is a graph of all the voltages of all, this, all the cells. There are 16 cells as far as the Orion is concerned. There's actually 32, uh, but they're paired up. So there's 16 as far as this thing is concerned. And what you can see is there's some relative consistency here in the middle, but there's this blue outlier. And in fact, there's a yellow outlier as well. The, the, the yellow one isn't as, uh, as crazy as the blue one is, but uh, what this means is I have almost certainly a bad connection to one of the cells. This is the result of having a high, high resistance connection to that cell. So uh, the blue represents cell two and the yellow is cell four. And if we come take a look at live data and look at, re at internal resistances, you can see cell two is 0.89. It's a lot higher than the others. Cell four currently is uh, 0.2, which um, is, is not higher than the other. So this one, this one isn't as bad, but it is still reflecting in the graph as a problem. So I'm just gonna uh, plug into shore power here, turn off the, the battery, do some cleaning, put it all back together. So we'll walk you through what that looks like. And we'll come back and take a look at this graph here. Okay, guys, we're outside in the battery area. <laughs> Please forgive the wiring. I haven't had a chance to clean this up. I had to do this in a rush. So here are my 32 cells. You can, they go back beyond where you can see here. And remember, these are paired up. So this pair right here is cell one, cell two, three, and four is back there. So I'm gonna have to operate on this one uh, and the one back there. And so what I'm gonna do is, like I said, I'm gonna disconnect everything. And I'm using this little sort of handheld sander device. It's just a Velcro, holds on a Velcro piece of sanding paper. And this is very high grit, like over a thousand, I forget the number, um, sandpaper, which is, it's, cause all you wanna do is polish. You don't wanna actually remove material. So what I did was I just kind of poked a hole, hole through this. So what I can do is stick this right on top of the terminal of the cell and twist it and that'll clean off the, the terminal of the cell. And then the bus bar I can, you know, clean by hand as well. And the reason I, I did this um, is because most of my studs are actually locked in, so I can't remove the stud. So I have to be able to put this on over the stud and do some twisting motion to get you know, to get the terminals clean. So that's really all I'm going to do from a cleaning standpoint. When I once I, I'm doing done doing that, that's going to leave some residue. So I'm going to use an air compressor to blow that off. I'll use a rag to get rid of further excess, and then. We're gonna use we're gonna use some deoxidizer. So this is the deoxid stuff I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description here, and I'll spray the the rag with this stuff, and I'll wipe down the terminals, and I'll wipe down the bus bars. And this is this is one of the good important reasons to use a rag instead of anything else because this isn't gonna leave any lint behind. So uh, the smallest amount of lint is gonna cause exactly what we're seeing on the BMS readout. So we'll put it all back together, take a look and see how that goes. So that's it. We'll, uh, we'll come back when, I'm, uh, when I've got some of this stuff off so you can see me doing the sanding and cleaning. Okay, so I've connected to shore power and what I'm gonna do is just walk you through the process that I go through to disconnect the battery safely and work on it while I am in this mode. So. While I'm doing this, I'm not going to lose any AC power inside, which is the reason I plugged into shore power. Otherwise, I'd have to go through a blackout. So let's hop back over to the battery bay and do some work. Okay, so let's take you down a little bit further here. What we have, this is just a Windows PC, believe it or not, fanless Windows PC. So I have the BMS and the, the Victron equipment hooked into here and I can remote into this. I can use VNC to remote into this in case I ever want to take out, take a peek at uh, the, the BMS like we just were. 
uh, or if I need to make a configuration change, uh, I don't have to come out here and hook up a laptop or any of that kind of stuff. I just do it by remoting into here. So this was pretty, this is a pretty cool, just cheap little uh, computer. So as far as the battery is concerned, we've got the battery positive here and the battery negative up here. And from the battery positive, you'll see this little wire going to this gold thing. That's a resistor that goes into this three position switch. So in my case, position one just uh, connects the positive bus bar to the battery through that resistor. And that's how I, I do what's called pre-charge. Really important in my case because I have two large inverters, large solar uh, uh, charge controllers above here that you can't currently see. And so there's a lot of capacitance on here. If I were just to hook, to hook this up directly or to turn the switch on directly, I'd have a huge spark and I would start to wear out these contacts really quickly. Not good for the system. So the first position will go to pre-charge. The second position is, is uh, we'll, we'll do a direct connect. So I just go to position one, I count to five or 10 and then, and then flip it to one plus two or two. Either one will, will work and that does a full battery connection. So I'm gonna do the inverse of that. So I'm gonna disconnect the battery by turning that off. And then I can turn off the circuit breaker here and I can disconnect the BMS power lead here. It'd be ideal if I had a switch for this, but right now I have to disconnect the BMS power lead. And then very important, most BMSs, you need to disconnect all of the uh, cell sensing leads before you do any maintenance. You can destroy the BMS if you disconnect only one of the leads. You need to, you need to pull out this entire set before you go work on the, BMS, on the battery. So that's the process that I'm gonna go through. And the inverters will just figure out, hey, there's no, no more battery here and they'll stop, it'll stop trying to charge. It'll, it'll keep the DC voltage up. But in my case, I won't actually have to do a pre-charge because the DC side will be uh, kept alive by the inverters being on shore power. But the proper sequence would be, as I had stated before, so the, so the inverse, you know, I would reconnect the sensing leads, connect power to the BMS, turn on the circuit breaker, turn that to one, count to five, somewhere between five and 10, and then flip that to one plus two or two. And that's how I would get the juice flowing again on the DC side of things. So I'm gonna do that now. The next stop will be me disconnecting this bus bar and the bus bar behind it so that I can reach the contacts of these cells. I don't know which one's bad, so I'm gonna have to clean all four of those. Again, remember two, two terminals per cell, two cells. And, uh, and then we'll do the same thing for cell number four or cell group number four. And uh, so I'll show you the process of doing the cleaning and, and all that stuff coming up next. Okay. So one of the bus bars has been removed. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just use this. I'll just push that right down onto the terminal. Give it some good cleaning. I'll do that to all of these. Shouldn't take much. We'll do the same thing to the bus bar, just nice and easy. Kind of see what I'm doing here. Polish that up. I'm gonna I should be wearing gloves. Uh, I don't want to get my the oils from my hand on here. Okay, watch your head. <laughs> and I'm gonna put gloves on now um, before I deoxidize it. But first, real quick, I'm just gonna blow some air onto it. So I got my rag, deoxidizer, I'm just gonna get this sprayed down and then I'm gonna use my finger to, to run that on top of the terminals that I just cleaned up. Okay, a little spot there. Okay, you can see it's not really dirt, but it's, it's just aluminum dust from doing the polishing, so that's good to get off there. 
Now, let's do the bus bar. So, I'm wearing a glove so I don't get my oils on there. And then we'll just reinstall this. Now, these are tinned bus bars. If this was pure copper, you wouldn't want to put that directly on these terminals. You would have uh, an oxidization problem between aluminum and copper. So you could use an antioxidant. I, I own some, I'm not going to use it because this is tin, so I'm not going to have any problems using this. So let's just get this installed. I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other bus bar, so I'm not going to bother showing you that boring stuff. And then we'll put it all back together, fire it up, and check it out. All right, so it's quite a bit later in the day, but because I've been getting ready to leave. But check this graph out. All of the lines are really close to each other. So clean your terminals. <laughs> When you're, when you're putting your battery together, it is incredibly important to make sure they're clean. I'm pretty sure I had this problem because I got a little bit lazy and I cleaned everything in such a way that I most likely left some lint behind. So I paid the price and I had to come back and fix it later, but this looks so much better. We're within, what, eight millivolts uh, of each other while under load which is pretty incredible. If I if I shut off the load, the the difference would be would be less, but you get a you get a an a, a bit of an AC induced waveform on your DC battery because of the inverter. So, anyway, that wraps up the video. Just wanted to do that real quick and in my next video, I'm going to be talking about getting underway. So, hopefully I have time and remember <laughs> to record getting underway tomorrow. I've got some stuff to show you with respect to the fifth wheel and tongue, uh, not tongue weight, pin weight and truck suspension and all that happy stuff. So stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching.